Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and on today's video, we're going to do a couple more experiments with gold refining and smelting with sulfides. So let me walk you through a little bit what we're going to do today. I've got these, uh, these are sulfides that came off our shaker table, and they're a mix of the number one and number two concentrates. And usually what I do is I take the number one concentrates, I pan out as much gold as I can, uh, melt that down, refine that through the cupelling process, and then I have all this black sand sulfide stuff left over. There's still some free gold in here, and there might be quite a bit of gold still locked up in the sulfides. So we're going to try and get that out today, and I'm going to do an experiment uh, using hydrogen peroxide to try and oxidize uh, some of these sulfides and release some of that free gold that's in there. All right, guys, so here's the stuff I'm going to be using. This is 35% uh, hydrogen peroxide. And hydrogen peroxide is a really, really good and strong oxidizer. So my hope is, is that we can uh, pour this into a gold pan with some of our sulfides, and it'll oxidize them in real time so we don't have to uh, roast them or try and smelt them with iron or anything like that. We'll just oxidize them right in the spot, and then we'll, uh, we'll smelt them down and get our gold out. All right, so the first thing we got to do is get these clumps and lumps kind of broken up. It's been sitting here for a while, and you can see it's, it's kind of solidified. So I'm going to crush these through one of our little jaw crushers and then uh, through a little disc grinder and try and break it up and get it all uniform in size so the hydrogen peroxide can go to town on it. Okay, so here's our little tray at the bottom of the jaw crusher. And it crushed up pretty good, so now we can put it through our little disc grinder and uh, get it all broken up back down to powder. All right, here's our stuff after that little disc mill. Uh, I've got it folded over on itself several times, kind of got it all mixed up and mixed together. So now I'm gonna take 50 grams of this stuff, and uh, let's see, we can actually do that right now, I think. I got my scale zeroed. All right, so here's our 50 grams. I'm gonna put them in this empty gold pan. And this stuff has a huge amount of surface area. So I think it's going to oxidize pretty well if the uh, hydrogen peroxide does its thing. And this is the most concentrated hydrogen peroxide you can buy. Uh, it will burn your skin, so I'm going to wear gloves. And I don't know what's going to come off of this as far as gases, if this works. Um, the one that you really want to watch out for is the hydrogen sulfide. Uh, so I'm going to be wearing a respirator when I do this. And I'll just pour a little bit in there, and we'll see what happens. Uh, but I'm also going to take another 50 gram sample of this and not do anything to it and smelt it separately so we can see the difference on uh, what the hydrogen peroxide did to this stuff versus uh, no treatment at all. Okay, here we go. Hey, cool. Whoa. Wow. All right, guys. Well, that was kind of crazy. Um, but it sure made some rusty fluid in there. Um, so let's see. What should I do? I'm going to, I'm going to decant this, this stuff off. Uh, and then I'll add some more. And, and I guess I'll just keep adding it until it stops fizzing. Uh, and that, that way we'll know everything got, got oxidized. So I'll just, uh, I'll just decant it here into this this thing. Got some rusty stuff in there already. All right, we'll try it again.
so it's actually pretty interesting. It, it gets warm. I mean, I can feel the heat on it. So it must be a pretty exothermic reaction. Um, I read somewhere that if you mix um, HCl with the hydrogen peroxide, it'll it'll help um, the reaction along. But I don't think we're having any problem with the reaction getting going here. Um, and I think that's be I, I mean one reason is because our surface area is so huge. There's there's so much material surface area wise for our peroxide to react to that it just goes crazy. All right, that was the third time. I'm just gonna keep going here until it stops bubbling like crazy. I'll let you know how many times it takes. All right, here's our 50 grams of sulfides. And I've rinsed them now in some clean water. I used that much hydrogen peroxide, a little over a liter. Um, and that's that's a lot for just 50 grams of sulfides here. So I can tell you right now, this isn't this isn't probably economically viable. Um, it cost me about $65 or something for that gallon. So to spend, I don't know, $20, $30 to oxidize 50 grams of sulfides, um, I'd rather just roast them. But we're going to keep going with the experiment here because we're just seeing what's going to happen. Um, so it, it certainly foamed a lot and, and boiled a lot. Uh, it, it turned some of the stuff red, but a lot of it's still black. Um, and I used, like I said, a little over a liter and I, I stopped. I didn't want to go anymore. The reaction was slowing down, but it wasn't, uh, stopping. Um, but I wanted to show you if we can see this. There's a little bit of gold in the corner right there. And also over here. So that's kind of cool. I don't know if that was released because of the hydrogen peroxide or if that was just some some residual gold in the pan that maybe got, you know, cleaned up, took off the iron oxide rust from it uh, or what. But um, let me get it panned out and see what kind of um, uh, crescent of gold we have in the pan there. All right. So let's see if I can get it to focus here. There we go. There is a nice line of gold right there. From 50 grams, which is hardly anything. Uh, so I think a significant amount of gold is actually released uh, from the oxidizing of the sulfides. Um, again, I don't know how much, what percentage was oxidized. Like I said, the, the reaction hadn't completed when I stopped. Uh, but there's, there's enough gold in there that I think something, something happened. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, uh, drain off the water and I'm going to dry this out and I'll weigh out another 50 grams of dry, uh, sulfides over here that hasn't done anything with, and we'll smelt them both down and see what we get, uh, in the bottom of our cone mold. All right, guys, just out of curiosity, here's our hydrogen peroxide sample. Here's the 50 grams that doesn't, we haven't done anything with. And I'm going to pan this down and see if we got a little crescent of gold and um, see if we can compare them and see uh, just the difference, if any, between the two just by the amount of gold in there. All right, it's, it's a little bit harder to see, but there's, there's some gold in this one as well. And, you know, it's hard to tell. I don't know if there's half as much or the same amount. Um, but it's not like there was nothing in this one and uh, half an ounce in the other one. So I can't say for sure if the hydrogen peroxide did anything to free up a bunch of additional gold. Um, but we'll smelt them both down and we can measure the size of the gold bead. And we'll also uh, measure the amount of mat that we have in each one. And that'll help us determine if how much and if any was oxidized between the two samples. 
our stuff has dried out. Here's the untreated concentrates. Here's the stuff we treated with peroxide. And uh, now it's dry, I'm gonna actually weigh them, see if there's any weight difference. But uh, regardless of what they weigh, we're gonna smelt them down and uh, see what we can recover as far as gold goes. So I just weighed both these. The 50 grams of the untreated stuff still weighs 50 grams. Uh, but interestingly, the hydrogen peroxide stuff only weighs 35. So we actually got some uh, weight reduction in this stuff. And so that's a good sign. Uh, so now let's mix up some smelting stuff. I'll kind of walk you through the smelting uh, procedure that I use and we'll get these things melted down. It's been a while since I've done a smelting video so I'm gonna walk you guys through the whole process. Here's a propane tank and a little regulator pushes propane through here and this goes into the furnace to create the flame. I have a uh, shop vac set up as a blower so this black hose goes down through to the manifold and I can adjust, there's a valve right here so I can adjust the amount of air and that uh, gives oxygen to get the right mix. This is uh, KO wool, just wrapped around in a cylinder and the top, a couple of fire bricks down there I set my crucibles on and that is pretty much my furnace. And I've got a video, if you guys wanna see how I made this, it's pretty straightforward and simple, um, but I got a video on how to make a, a KO wool smelting furnace. All right, so I'm gonna mix up both of these the same. This is the hydroxide sample. And I'm going to use 150 grams of borax. I've got the sample in there, it's pretty much mixed up. And I'm gonna use the borax because I wanna keep the sample really uh, acidic, the slag really acidic, because one of the one of the things here is to figure out how much sulfides was oxidized. And if I keep the slag really acidic with borax only, not using any soda ash, then uh, all the sulfides will form a mat, and then we can uh, weigh the mat after um, we're smelted. And and if this is the unoxidized stuff, if it's if it weighs 45 grams of mat and the hydroxide stuff only weighs 10 grams, we know we've, we've eaten up a lot of the mat and uh, our, our experiment was, was successful. So this, the goal here isn't necessarily to see um, how much gold we recover, it's to see how much mat we have in the smelt. And that's why if you use a bunch of soda ash and make the, the slag fairly basic, it will uh, absorb some of that iron sulfide mat and we won't be able to tell uh, the, the results of the hydroxide. So here's our two samples. This is the unoxidized stuff here. This is the oxidized stuff. And uh, we'll take our two crucibles here. I'm not gonna add any iron. I'm not gonna do any oxidizer. I'm not gonna do anything. It's just 150 grams of borax and uh, the, the 50 grams of material we started with uh, and the hydroxide stuff turned into 35 grams. So I'm gonna put this stuff right in the furnace as is, and then we'll pour it in our cone mold.
Okay, you can usually just take a little hammer when the when the stuff's cooled off and just kind of tap it. And there you go. There's our there's a little mat pyramid. All right, so I've weighed both of these. The small one is 20 grams and the larger one is 35 grams. So the hydrogen peroxide oxidized about, I don't know, 15 grams or so of sulfides in our sample, but it didn't do all of them, obviously. I mean, we still have a, a, quite a bit of mat here. Uh, and I used, I don't know, half of a gallon to do it. So it's, it's really not a very efficient way to oxidize your sulfides. This is really an experiment to see if it would work at all. And um, it did oxidize some, but but not enough to be practical. Um, but let me explain a little bit what a mat is. Uh, this is uh, the sulfides that are in the ore. They're not soluble in the slag that we make. If we make it real acidic and real glassy, like this stuff here, it looks like obsidian or glass. The, the sulfides don't dissolve in this. And so it, it forms a layer that's uh, uh, called a mat layer. And sometimes you'll have three layers. You'll have the, you know, if this was in the cone mold, you'd have the mat layer, you'd have a little metal button at the bottom, and then you'd have the slag on top um, to form a three-layer pyramid. But here we don't have any button. I'm actually going to break open the tip of this and see if we have any button at all. Um, and the mat, especially copper and lead mat, is really good at dissolving precious metals. So you really don't want to have any copper or lead mat in your stuff. And one of the ways to do that is to, and I have a bunch of videos on this, is to add iron, uh, an iron rod or nails or whatever to your smelt in the furnace. And the iron replaces the copper and the lead uh, in with sulfur. So the copper sulfide goes to copper metal and iron sulfide and the lead sulfide goes to lead metal and iron sulfide. And iron sulfide is a really poor uh, holder of precious metals. And so once you reduce the copper, the lead, uh, bismuth, anything else in there, it will form a metallic bead. Most of the precious metals will collect in that bead at the very bottom of the cone because the metal is the most dense and then the mat is uh, less dense than the metal and then the slag is the least dense. But by replacing all the uh, copper, lead, sulfides with iron sulfide, you can actually, even if you do get a mat layer, it's not a big deal because the precious metals are uh, collected down the bottom with the other base metals that you've reduced. The other option is if you make your slag really, really basic by adding soda ash or lye, uh, the, you still use the iron and the soda ash can actually dissolve the iron sulfide that you make. And so the iron reduces the base metals to metallic form and then your basic slag, uh, absorbs the iron sulfide and you're left with a two-layer system. It's it's a, a slag layer and then a little metallic button layer on top which, where all your precious metal is. And that's really what you want. I mean, if you're in the smelting or the assaying field, you really don't want a matte layer, even if it's iron sulfide. You, you want uh, two things. You want a, a slag that has no metallic beads in it at all and a metallic button at the bottom. So let's, uh, again, that's kind of a, you know, what mat is and, and the basic principle of smelting. But let's break these open because if uh, there there is a little precious metal bead in here, it'll be right at the bottom. Sometimes it's just encapsulated in the mat. So I'll break both of these open and see if we got a little precious metal bead at the bottom. So I broke them both open and uh, there's no metallic bead in either one of these. And this is a great example of we saw gold in the pan, we could pan the gold out physically and actually see uh, the streak of gold in, in both pans. But we have enough uh, base metal sulfides here that the gold and the silver and all the precious metals is absorbed into this slag here. 
And that's not a, a terrible problem. I mean, there's, you can, I can take this, resmelt it with iron, make a basic slag and, uh, recover the gold. So the gold's not lost, but this would be, um, a, a failed smelt. And so this is, this is just an example of what you, you don't want to have happen. So, um, in the future, I would not use hydrogen peroxide as a oxidizer and, uh, using a different slag recipe to make it more basic, adding iron, uh, rebar, iron bar, nails, whatever, to reduce, uh, all the base metal sulfides to metallic form, forming a pure iron sulfide and then dissolving it in the basic slag. So um, that is the conclusion of our video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, you can find our contact information in the description below. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.